What's going on guys, it's Scott here and welcome back to Fudge Mop. And today we have an all new, never seen before Skyrim build to share with you. And this guy will be utilizing the strongest weapon in the entire game. So if you wanted a ridiculously powerful build, then you've come to the right video. This is the Spell Sword. The Spell Sword uses the trifecta of damage dealing methods to dish out as much damage as possible. With a perfectly crafted enchanted sword and the very best destruction spells topped off with deafening shouts, I'm not exaggerating when I say this guy is absolutely unstoppable. The Spell Sword trained to become the most diverse and powerful warrior in Skyrim to help the Nords reclaim their homeland. This man will stop at nothing to sit Ulfric on the throne in the Blue Palace and to liberate his people from the influence of the Aldmeri Dominion and the Empire. Before we get into this build, don't forget that you can use the timestamps in the description to get around to different parts of the video. But with that said, let's hop right into the Spell Sword's race, Standing Stone, and his stats. The Spell Sword is, if you haven't already guessed, a proud Nord of Skyrim. This means he can channel his powerful voice and send out a battle cry, making a target flee for 30 seconds. He also has a 50% resistance to frost, and thanks to his northern blood, he will gain a plus 5 boost to one-handed, light armor, and smithing. Use the Lover Stone early on for a well-rounded way to level all of your skills. After that, use the power of your ethereal crown to take both the Lord Stone and the Atronarch Stone. If you manage to get your hands on the ethereal crown early on, which we recommend, start off with the Lover Stone and the Atronarch before switching the Lover out for the Lord once leveling is sorted. As for stats, put 50% into health and 50% into Magicka. This will give you a healthy balance between tankiness and Magicka reserves. Once you get your destruction cast cost reduction up to 75%, start dumping all of your points into health. Stamina will be taken care of by the respite perk from the restoration skill tree, but we'll get into that soon. The Spell Sword was born in a small village in Eastmarch, Skyrim. He grew up as a member of a proud Nordic family. Most of the village settlers were former Imperial soldiers during the Great War, but since returning, things changed. When the Spell Sword was a young lad, his village was occupied by women and children. All of the men were off fighting. Some of the women worked together to take care of the homely duties, preparing meals, storing salted meat for the winter to come, and some even took it upon themselves to hunt for game in the absence of their husbands. All the while, the Spell Sword and the other children would play with wooden swords under the majestic red and black banners of the Imperials. Their fathers were true soldiers, and their village was so decorated in Imperial heraldry that it looked more like a military encampment. The girls who didn't fancy fighting in the snow and mud would turn regular old shirts into mock uniforms, stitching the bear's head of Windhelm on the chest and even the golden bird of the Aldmeri Dominion for whoever wanted to roleplay as the baddies. The Spell Sword refused to wear the Dominion colors though, even for a game. When he won his battles, he would make a show of tearing the emblazoned bird from the shirt and tossing it into the campfire. The Spell Sword remembered the day when their fathers returned. They waited on the edge of camp, mothers, sons, and daughters of Skyrim, eagerly anticipating the embrace of their loved ones, hoping and praying that they returned from war safely. Letters rarely made it to the rural villages like theirs, so there was always the slightest sliver of doubt and fear creeping into the back of their minds that maybe their fathers would never return. The Spell Sword had no such fear though. His father was too strong to kill. He remembered as clear as day the smile on his father's face when they caught eyes, and they ran to each other and the Spell Sword launched himself into his father's extended arms. Despite their legendary efforts under General Jonah, reclaiming the Imperial City and preventing the Aldmeri escape to the south, the Empire was desperate and close to breaking. The White Gold Concordat was signed and the Nord celebrations were cut short, leaving a bitter taste in their mouths. From that day onward, the Spell Sword lost faith in the Empire. He could never respect someone who bowed to the Elves. Skyrim was for the Nords. The Spell Sword had never met anyone from any other race, and he'd harbored no ill will towards them, but he agreed that each race should stick to their own domain, leaving the Nords alone in Skyrim. The Spell Sword continued to train with the sword as much as possible, proudly wearing the bear's head of Windhelm and the Stormcloaks. As he neared adulthood, he wanted desperately to leave the small town to join the Stormcloak ranks, but his father forbade it. The Spell Sword was dumbfounded. No one was more proud of Nordic culture than his father, yet he wouldn't allow his son to fight for the same belief. His father did not want to put his son in danger, fighting a war that was balanced on a knife's edge. The tension between the Imperial presence in Skyrim and the nationalist values of the Nords was palpable, and in their village, safely tucked away from the bulk of the conflict, the Spellsword's father felt that his family was safe. After many sleepless nights, the Spellsword refused to take no for an answer. He had practiced every day while his father was off fighting. He loved his father, but it wasn't fair that he got to win glory for his nation while the Spellsword was hidden away at home like an 
disobedient pup. One night over supper, his father told him and his mother about an important mission coming up that would require him to travel to the Joral Mountains, bordering Cyrodiil. Even Ulfric himself was going to be there. As he always did, his father set off for a several day long hunt into the Volothi Mountains to supply them with some game while he was gone fighting. The Spellsword pounced on this opportunity. He crept into his father's private rooms and found his father's precious armor. It was gloriously crafted, hide and leather with a chainmail hauberk and a polished full helm. The Spellsword took the armor as well as his father's best sword and shield, and then for the first time in his life, he left his small town. He travelled for a day on foot before hitching a ride on a vegetable cart headed for Iverstead. He met with the Stormcloak Force, posing as his father. He even shook hands with Ulfric himself. As they made their way into the mountains, they were ambushed by Imperial soldiers. They were heavily outnumbered and the Spellsword nearly panicked. He had been leagues ahead of the other children in his village, but that was always playful sparring. These men looked determined to kill him. He swallowed his fear and raised his shield. Most of the Imperials focused their attention on Ulfric and his bodyguards. The Spellsword was only approached by one enemy. He held his high ground and waited for his foe to swing. When the blow came, he caught it with his shield and countered just like he had practiced. The Imperials staggered back, slowed significantly by the heavy snows. You're a stranger in these lands, the Spellsword thought. You fight on grass and stone, not snow and ice. The spell sword advanced, bringing his sword down and chopping into his right shoulder. The sword continued on its path all the way down to the man's sternum, killing him instantly. But it was stuck. He couldn't for the life of him rip his sword free as he saw two more Imperials closing in on him. He let the sword go and retreated higher into the mountains. He eventually got out of sight of the fighting. He could hear the screams of men and the sounds of swords clashing, but through the blizzard he saw nothing. If these men didn't kill him, surely his father would. Whether it was the cold that caused it or his overwhelming fear, or maybe both, he couldn't be sure. He began ripping the Stormcloak's armor from his body until he was garbed only in his neutral brown undershirt and trousers. He was ashamed, but he knew the battle was lost. He wasn't a member of the Stormcloaks yet, and he wouldn't be recognized. He could just slip away and return home with his tail between his legs. But that hope was lost when his path took him directly to a carriage. On the back of the carriage was Ulfric and another Stormcloak, and looking directly at him were several Imperial soldiers. They took him into custody and carted him off to Helgen. After escaping the block, the Spellsword will be penniless and lacking his father's armor, sword, and shield. Returning home would be too shameful. The only way he could make this right is by being a loyal servant to Skyrim, pledging his life to the Stormcloak cause. He won't openly hate any of the other races, but he will aim to uphold the Stormcloak's value system. He thinks other races should stick to their own land, especially considering the consequences of allowing the elves of the Aldmeri Dominion to dictate who they can't and can worship. Only the Nords have a right to decide how Skyrim should be governed. In order to make the most change for the better to the province, the Spellsword will seek out new skills. He is skilled with a sword, but he knows he's not the greatest warrior alive. He will make an impact by combining his swordsmanship with other abilities like magic. After discovering he is in fact the prophesized Dragonborn, he realizes he is the ultimate tool for delivering Skyrim to justice. He will utilize the three sources of power to be the most well-rounded Nord warrior in the land. He'll channel the Thum, master the arcane arts, and swing a sword like the best of them. Therefore, the main storyline and the Dragonborn DLC are definitely on the cards for this build. He will see through his Dragonborn status and maximize his potential. He'll also get to the College of Winterhold to learn destruction and restoration magic. Once he considers himself a skilled spell sword, capable of taking down his foes with the three forms of power, he will seek out and join the Stormcloaks. Other than these, the Dawnguard DLC will give you access to new elemental magic if you side with the Dawnguard, and the companions are a great test of might. You can decide whether or not to keep the werewolf curse. With the spell sword's backstory, roleplaying, and faction sorted, let's have a look at what this will mean for his skills, spells, shouts, perks, and his overall play style. The skills for this build will be one-handed destruction, restoration, light armor, smithing, and finally enchanting. Before we get into the specific perks to take from each of these skills, here are the spells and shouts you'll want to get your hands on. From destruction, grab mostly fire spells, but you can change this up depending on your enemy. Fireball is a great pick, and when you optimize your destruction cast cost reduction, 
reduction enough, Incinerate will be a great primary spell. As for healing spells, Close Wounds is always a great pick, but Heal Other works well too for protecting fellow Stormcloaks. He can also use any destruction or restoration spells that work well against the undead. As for Shouts, Fire Breath and Unrelenting Force will be the two best picks. But with those cleared up, let's get straight into the Spell Sword's essential perks. As a proud and powerful Nord, the combat style of an all-out mage simply wouldn't suffice for the Spell Sword. He preferred being in the thick of battle, feeling the crunch of bones and splitting of flesh beneath his sword. This versatile warrior values the sword and wields it as well as the very best Northern warriors. From the one-handed skill tree, take the middle branch up to Savage Strike. Only three perks and seven perk points are needed here. But this will give you all you need to be as deadly as possible in battle. Savage Strike will give you a 25% boost to standing power attacks while also giving you the ability to decapitate foes, sending a message to any others who want a piece of you. And with a sword in one hand, taking down close range foes, the Spell Sword counts on magical projectiles to deal with others from a distance. The Spell Sword uses magic offensively and prioritizes destruction magic to be as strong as he possibly can be. From the destruction skill tree, get everything except for Master Destruction, Rune Master, and the far right branch. With the combination of augmented flames, frost, and shock, you'll be a beast with all elements of magic damage, but flames will be the one you call upon most, so the 50% damage boost here is massive. The Nords of Skyrim can take a beating almost as well as they can deliver one, but their dismissal of magic leaves them quite a blind spot when dealing with enemies who have no qualms about embracing it. Thanks to Restoration, the Spell Sword can protect and heal his brothers and sisters, despite them knowing nothing of magic. From this skill tree, go for the first and second branch, the fourth branch up to Adept Restoration, and then both ranks of recovery. Respite is a great pick for the Spell Sword, as his healing spells will now heal stamina as well, allowing you to grab a second wind as you swing your sword. As a spell sword, this build combines two different sets of battle strategies, utilizing the best aspects of each. He doesn't want to be left exposed, garbed only in mage's robes, but simultaneously, a hulking set of heavy armor will impair his vision, his movement, and will make casting and swinging frequently quite taxing on his endurance. For that reason, he chooses light armor, and from this skill tree, grab all five ranks of agile defender for the 100% boost to light armor rating. Magic may be as effective as its caster, but arms and armor are only as good as the smith who crafted them. No Nord worth his salt would neglect the art of smithing, and the Spell Sword needs this skill to make the very best light armor and the sharpest, most well-weighted sword that he can. From the smithing skill tree, get Arcane Blacksmith and the right hand branch up to Ebony Smithing. Light armor, generally speaking, isn't going to be designed to benefit a mage, but with the help of enchanting, the Spell Sword can get the best of both worlds. From the enchanting skill tree, take the full left branch and the full middle branch. Extra effect, as always, is great for allowing you to put two enchantments on each item, and the three elemental perks, Fire Enchanter, Frost Enchanter, and Storm Enchanter will make all enchantments of the corresponding element 25% stronger. We've got the skills and associated perks, as well as your arsenal of shouts and spells, so now we should take a look at how to use that in gameplay. The Spell Sword's playstyle will involve charging into the fight, slashing with your sword in the right hand, and blasting powerful destruction spells from your left hand. You can use Restoration Magic as you see fit to keep revitalized and rejuvenated throughout the battle. If you're fully prepared with smithed and enchanted gear, you'll have no trouble destroying all the enemies you come across. Simple and effective. As for gear, get yourself a full set of light style room armor, but instead of a helmet, use the ethereal crown. Then slap on a necklace and ring of your choice for four additional enchantment slots. Enchant the chest piece with fortify destruction and restoration, the necklace and ring with fortify one-handed and fortify destruction, the gauntlets with fortify one-handed and fortify magicka, then enchant the boots with fortify one-handed and stamina regen. As for weapons, get yourself a Stala Rim Sword with the Chaos Damage and Frost Damage enchantments. And there you have it guys, give the video a like if you enjoyed and you want to see more builds. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for much more content like this. Don't forget that you can find your way around the video by following timestamps in the description. You can always find links to our social media accounts there and also you should go and give us a follow. As always, thanks so much for watching. My name's Scott and I look forward to nerding out with you again in the next one.